On a gorgeous day like today, it can be pretty hard to remember that we're in one of the wettest parts of the country out here in Western Oregon. We get about 170 days of rain each year. And uh, while shipping containers are designed with their thick, zinc-rich epoxy paints to be pretty durable in wet conditions, they don't survive uh, sitting out here in the rain continuously. The shipping container that uh, you saw in the last video had been sitting on the same site for about a decade. And uh, pine needles have built, built up on them basically acting like mulch that was causing water to pool and stagnate and any sort of micro fracture in the epoxy would let the water through, would get through to the metal, metal swells when it rusts, um, it'll make, create more cracks and you sort of get this cascading effect of rust and in some parts uh, of the container we're rusted pretty much all the way through. So in the video today uh, we're going to be working on framing out a roof system for these two containers. Uh, the pitch roof will keep water off the containers uh, which means we don't have to keep them painted and they should be free of any more rust growth and also the area between the two containers will be enclosed meaning we'll have more dry area uh, for storage and for putting animals and generally it'll just make the space more usable so i'm gonna go move these cows over here uh, get them into a pasture with more grass and then let's get start working on some framing Come on.
Hey, I am no expert when it comes to roof framing. I've done a couple of other projects in the past that involve roofing. I built a goat house, a chicken house, and a goose house that all had roofs. And the way I sort of approached those, I built the uprights and then just kind of winged it, pardon the pun, um, to make the roof structure that fits. Uh, what I ended up doing for this project is I made plans, and the plans were much more akin to what you do for a pole barn building, like this building that I'm sitting in, whereby you have um, the roof trusses, then you have horizontal, yeah, horizontal purlins that you attach the roofing membrane to. And um, I did the plan for a couple of reasons. Uh, the first is that I was doing it, I did it, that, that, that. I did the drawing in um, Fusion 360, which let me do some parametric design, which meant I could change the angles and see how it all looked electronically before I settled on a design that worked for me. Uh, the other advantage of doing it in Fusion is that I could design for the expected or code required snow load of 25 pounds per square foot. Um, I'm not an expert on this stuff, but at least giving it a sniff test in Fusion was useful. Uh, the other advantage of having some plans, plans, plans drawn up is that I could do the cut lists and I could do all the cuts from the safety um, of my shop where I'm enclosed, it's nice and comfortable in here, and I could use my uh, miter saws rather than my circular saw. In fact, I couldn't even use the circular saw if I wanted to. You may remember, if you're an avid viewer of this channel, um, that this is my second Makita uh, brushed DC motor uh, circular saw. This one has died as well. I'm now learning a lesson that if you buy the cheapest and put it uh, to hard work, it may not survive. So I've decided to shell out a little bit more money. I'm paying for this tool now probably four times when you add up the costs. I'm getting the, the, the slightly better version that hopefully is a little bit more rugged and will work. But anyway, I've done all the cuts and now it's time to actually put it together. So let's go out to the containers and put together some trusses. This should be fun.
course, the most exciting thing happens where I'm not actually rolling the uh, camera. Uh, if I was rolling the camera, you would have seen one of the trusses, this last final truss, fall off and uh, completely fall off the, the container. Um, you've probably noticed I've been using this bridge platform to sort of keep the trusses temporarily in place um, while I get everything sort of uh, secured to each other. And uh, I got a little cocky for this last one and I only used one screw to, to hold it to, tr uh, to hold the, the truss to the platform. And it was doing pretty well, but then I had to nudge everything to get everything lined up to start putting in these purlins, which would have finally secured it in place. Unfortunately, the screw decided to shear off, and so it fell off. Uh, luckily, it didn't break. Uh, unfortunately, though, the truss is a lot heavier than what I could lift, so I had to break the truss down into three pieces, and I'll be able to lift it back up and uh, put it back together. But this brings me to the topic of screws. I like screws. I've been using screws to, to do all this work so far. I like screws really for two reasons. One is that they um, pull mating pieces together. Uh, wood can sort of bow and buckle. Things might not be perfectly aligned. And it's nice to have that sort of compression um, effect from screws when you're, you're bringing pieces together. You can cinch them together real tight. The other reason is you can undo them. Uh, if you make mistakes or if you want to move things around, uh, you can undo the screw, screw it back in, and you're good. Downside of screws is that they're a lot more expensive. And because they have to sort of cut through the wood fibers as they screw in, they're a lot harder, which means that they're brittle and subsequently or consequently, they'll shear as uh, you saw, well, didn't see, but that's what happened uh, when that truss fell off. And uh, they're a lot more expensive. I think I said that. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna screw this back together and uh, then I'm gonna come through when I do all the rest of the purlins and the rest of the members and nail everything. Nails are advantageous in that they're a lot faster to go in, they're a lot cheaper, and they're softer. Um, they're still pretty hard, and this is the saying hard as nails, um, but they'll support shear loads a lot better and they'll, they'll survive. Uh, of course, I'm not gonna nail things through until everything's perfectly aligned. Uh, there's a lot more work that needs to go into this to get everything straight and square and level and plumb. Uh, the bottom of these, uh, or the top of these shipping containers have these trapezoidal ridges, plus they're buckled and bowed. Um, I need to anchor the wood to the metal. I'm going to weld up some brackets that will overcome the buckling and get everything lined up. But once those are, um, once the trusses are bracketed to the steel container, I'll come in with nails and nail everything together and nail in the purlins. But for now, I need to get this truss back up, so let's go do that.